Hi, I'm Karen Lord. I'm a writer from the Caribbean, and I was a judge for the Commonwealth Short Story Prize in 2019. Uh, my name is Constantia Sotirio. Um, I'm the Commonwealth uh, Literature Prize winner for 2019, and I'm so happy to meet Karen after such a long time and having this conversation. Absolutely. It's been great um, just watching... Um, you know, how the Commonwealth writers, all the things have been happening since then. Um, I've been seeing you, of course, still giving interviews and, and so on the website. But most of all, I'm happy to be here with you because one of the things that is going to happen is you're going to read from your story that won the prize, you're going to read a selection. And I think that it's especially important given this new environment, this pandemic environment we find ourselves in. So I was wondering if you could just um, give us that selection. Okay, so I'm starting with a story. Um, just saying again, the title is Death Customs. They called Spasula in the evening to tell her that they had found her son. Wasn't it in the evening they called you to tell you about your son, Spasula? He was found in a mass grave. They said, buried face down next to three others. They have now picked them all up. Almost all those of that day were found. They decided to bury them too in the end. They were innocent, they said. They had a mandate. The minister gave a speech during the funeral too. They were innocent. They were merely carrying out orders. They were innocent. They were only doing what they had been told. They were innocents and they too needed to be buried already. The wounds need to heal. The chapters need to conclusions. Shames to our government for keeping them in disgrace all these years. A few people wanted to strike Macarius out. They got on some tanks, vroom, vroom, vroom. They were planning to enter the presidential palace. Then the others, the guards, shot them. They died. The one killed the other. They were all killed. They were all just following orders, just orders. They were all innocents said the minister. They didn't really want to kill anyone. They were following orders from high up. Who was high up giving them orders, Pasula? They were innocents. They did what they were ordered. They were innocents. They couldn't stand up to their superiors. They were innocents. They didn't know what was really going on. They were 18 year old children. They made them wear the Haki uniform and they put guns in their hands I told them to kill Macarios. They were young. They couldn't say no. Put yourself in their shoes for a moment, said Spasula. He couldn't say no. Whether innocent or guilty, he got killed there. I know you feel sick, so you wouldn't come bury him at the funeral. He was 18 years old and didn't know how to say no. Innocent or guilty, he was my son and he died. We searched for him for 40 years. Now we found him buried face down, thirsty. My baby was face down, thirsty and dead for 40 years. And Spasula started crying for her son who was left well waterless and thirsty for so many years. And I went out in the yard and accompanied her crying. And we were just in time to see Georgia my daughter came with her books to tell us off of fighting. She wanted to tell us something about some Polynikis. We would never met anyone by that name in person. He must have been another woman's son. They found him dead too. We cried that night, Spasula and I, for all the dead, the unknown, and the known too. We only fought once, Spasula and I. That one time we shouldn't have. The time I felt in and I didn't go to her son's funeral with her. And it weighed on my heart terribly to know that though she had always stood by me, I couldn't stand by her that day. We didn't manage to bury her son together. I couldn't stand by her. I was angry and bitter and resentful because I believe that it was her son who, with his ways and his, de and his deeds, had killed your Georgakis in the end. After that day, after she buried him, Spasula felt ill. She felt ill in bed 
And now we are all have gathered around her to keep vigil, to tell stories so she won't feel lonely ever again. Because there is one thing I have gathered after this whole thing I've been through, after all these years lived in service to the lost ones, there is one thing I have felt in my bones. If there is anyone who is innocent in the world, it's us, Spasula, the others who waited, me and me. Spasula and all the others who would wait it, me and Spasula and the other women, innocent, only us. There were once two brothers, the tale goes, proper brothers, real ones, brothers, but the brothers fought. They pulled out knives and they fought, fought for real. They had a kingdom to divide among them. They are land which is sweet and bitter, the sweet land tales. They fell, they fought, they got killed. They fell, they fought, their blood was scattered. They were lost. Nobody knows where they were buried. Tales of the sweet lands. Tales, tales, tales. They fell down dead. They were buried. They went missing. The buried dead were lost. But nobody told their loved ones that they had died. And the women Look, though, look for them for a long, long time. They are mothers, they are daughters, they are wives, tales and tales. That's what the tale says. They will go out at night and scream. They went out at night and cried in feeds. Where are you? Come back. Where are you? Come back to us. Where are you? Why won't you come? And not a single person to tell them. Not a single person to tell them. Not Aredusa, not Castanomalusa, not Lieri, not even Meluzini. Did none of them know? Nobody knew. Lies. They left them on their own, crying in fits. They left them crying on their own. That's how our tales are here. That's how tales are. The tales of the sweet land. They have no happy endings. They have no ending. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. One of the reasons I was so looking forward to, to hearing you um, read that again is that having read it before the pandemic and having read it again after the pandemic, it just, um, it just completely was a completely transformed story. It was already a story that grabbed me by the heart. But this time around, it was really more like it was in my bones as well. At that time, I was looking at it as um, I was almost like an outsider looking in at this experience of collective grief. And now the pandemic has happened and so many things have changed. And now I feel as if I'm part of a collective grief and the story feels more like my story. And it's, it's, it's actually part of the power of, of the story itself that is, is, is that enduring and it, and it changes for you as you change. But I want to focus on one line you said, especially the mothers and daughters and wives, they're the ones who wait, they're the ones who will be caring for like 40 years down the line to want to know what happened, where are you? Um, you were, we, you wanted to talk a bit about some of the stresses that the mothers and daughters and wives are facing during this pandemic. Yes. Um... I think, you know, I, I have the same feeling when I read the story, first of all, because although it seems that it has been ages since I wrote this story and all these things, the wonderful things with the competition happened, at the mm -hmm. same time, because of the subject, because of the grieving process that the story describes, mm -hmm. it seems so relevant to what we are experiencing now with the COVID. Um, I think it is a period of, uh, of grieving, of isolation, mm -hmm. of women uh, having to carry all the burden of, uh, the, of what is happening with the, of, of, with the pandemic. It's like it's on the shoulders of women to take care of everybody, to continue mm -hmm. with their work, to take care of the household, to be great mothers at the, at the same time while they lost all their support system um, that was their parents, their friends, their schools, uh, mm -hmm. the neighbors. Uh, 
everything is lost for women. And at the same time, they have to be there. They have to be strong. They have, again, to be the main carers, the persons that offer everything mm -hmm. in the family, in the house, in the working industry. And I think it's the same all over again. It's like facing a war and the women are asked not only to carry their own grief and their own pain, but at mm -hmm. the same time to take care of everything else, of everybody else, and make sure that the world is in order, that the, mm -hmm. the, the universe, the cosmos is not collapsing. And mm -hmm. I think it's very hard and it's very difficult. And I'm very glad that uh, we have the opportunity to address this. Yes, yes. I like, I like the image you just gave of, um, you know, we're supposed to keep the world in order. We're supposed to keep the cosmos turning in, in its particular ordered way, because that's almost, that's almost the work of a goddess, not a mortal. And, um, and it's understandable that we would feel a little bit stressed um, trying, trying to keep that moving. But, but what's it like, especially as a woman writer, um, to, be, to be facing these things? I mean, to be a, to be a mother at this time, to be looking at, um, you know, taking care of your children's education, um, to be possibly in a family where you're also taking care of elders. I mean, are you finding the time? Are you finding the focus? Well, um, I'm really asking myself, how do we find the time <laughs> to do <laughs> everything? You know, it was, it was really, really difficult and it was really, really hard at the beginning. Um, I think that the, the most, like the worst part was that um, like the, the world as we knew it, like our routine, our daily, daily life changed. So while uh, we thought, I thought before that um, everything was difficult around me because I have a daily job and I work um, until three o'clock and I have to take care of the children and the house and at the same time be a writer and be focused on what I'm doing. Um, mm -hmm. While I thought that was difficult, what I faced was extremely difficult. It was very hard because the children were at home, you have to take care of their education, they are online uh, classes, at mm -hmm. the same time, you have to be good at York. Um, the house was a mess. I, it, it was like um, everything was, I, in, a, in a moment I thought, I thought that everything was collapsing and it was very difficult to be you and function. But at mm -hmm. the same time, it's like, um, I always say that as women, we have a lot of hats, as mothers, as working women. I think the writer's hat, hat is the most difficult to wear because in mm. order to be a writer, you have to find a lot of things, like you have to find privacy. You have to be able to focus because uh, in order to fill that white page, as you may well know, Karen, you have to do a lot of research. You have to mm -hmm. talk to people um, and you have to do a lot of work. But uh, the most important thing is, is that you have to be alone to be into the subject and write and, uh, and, and find the core of the theme that uh, you are looking and, um, and write what is real and essential. I found that so difficult to do in many ways. Um, not only uh, in a practical term, but just find the time to sit mm -hmm. down, do my research and write, but mostly time to focus and um, time to mm -hmm. be with myself. Um, it, 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 wa it wasn't easy just uh, keep everybody outside or of a place, of a room and sit down and write. It was more than it, the stress, and the responsibilities and the unknown situation that we face affected mm -hmm. me really hard. And it was very difficult to be me and, and be a writer and, and be able to, to do what I know I can do. It took me twice the time to focus, to find my stuff. And, you know, um, as I told you, it's, it has always been difficult for me to write, being a mother, being a working woman and, and do everything. But this time, it was the most difficult time of all. And it was, you know, um, it was difficult to find what Virginia Woolf said, a room of, a room of your own. 
Uh, mm -hmm. I know that it was the next things that you were going to ask. Uh, <laughs> we were leading, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. it was that room that I was looking uh, during the whole time. And, and I'm still looking um, the room of the writer to be able to be isolated, to be able mm -hmm. to uh, be alone with, uh, with um, to be alone with myself mm -hmm. and, and be able to be authentic and write about the stuff I'm writing. This, this um, concept of a room of your own, I've often thought of it as not merely a physical space, but very much a mental and spiritual space. Because you can be physically in a room by yourself, but still bringing in with you the, the cares and responsibilities of, of the people that you have to be, be taken care of. Um, and just as you said, because things are so, are so changed and so unpredictable, um, we don't have the routines, we don't have the stability, we have 10,000 more decisions to make. And um, it's, it's, it's extremely difficult to find focus. Um, but but you, feel, you feel like you're beginning to get a handle on it because I mean, as you say, if you begin to get accustomed to the situation, some of that piece starts to creep back a little bit. Yes, um, I think that um, one important de decision that I made some time ago it got, it was that I shouldn't let this situation affect me as much. It was mm. um, a difficult decision to make, you know, but- um, I, I feel that, I feel that. <laughs> but, yeah, but, you know, you have to look yourself in the mirror mm. and say, this has to stop. I mean, situations mm. are very difficult, mm. uh, but you have to come over them. And, you know, um, I have an older brother and an older sister Mm -hmm. And my siblings um, experienced the war in Cyprus, you know, when they were really little. Uh, they were like my sister was nine and my mm -hmm. brother was eight years old. And mm -hmm. they told me stories about they were going around with my mother and that they had to change three different schools uh, wow. at one school year, um, that they experienced danger and everything. And they said, hey, we overcome that and we were young. How can not be able to overcome this, having all these um, uh, ar arrangements, uh, the facilities around us? And mm -hmm. I thought that, yes, uh, you are so... Um, it's very easy sometimes to complain and say that things are really difficult, but there are other women in the world that... They, they had to cope with more difficult issues. I have a stable work that I wasn't in the danger of losing it uh, mm. and being able to work from home. While I know other people, other young women here in Cyprus as well, they had to lose their jobs. They had to stay home, take care of, the, of their children. So it's good, even in this uh, terrible situation, mm -hmm. to be able to look at the bright things and you know uh, to go back to the writing thing. Uh, the fact that I am a writer, sorry, always helped me to cope with, diffi with difficult situations. Mm -hmm. And I thought that this is a weapon I have. This is something I can use for my benefit. So mm -hmm. what I did is that I went back to my library. I went back to my room, you yes. know, where I have all these books that I take comfort from. Mm -hmm. So. I went back and, and I, I read a lot of books and I started feeling better. And mm -hmm. then I was able to sit down and start writing again. And it was mm -hmm. like a miracle happened, Karen. You know, after I read my books, after I told myself, stop, stop being silly, just focus on <laughs> so hard to write. You know, uh -huh. uh, I, I did this because, you know, writing it's a lot of things you know it's about talent of course uh, mm -hmm. it's about uh, doing your research as we said it's about um find uh, uh, the subject and everything but uh writing is about sitting down thank writing. you <laughs> it's about the hard work of getting the words on the page yes and i have always been very disciplined on this you know i always uh, i always have tried to find hours to sit and write and I went back to my routine on this and it really helped me. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And I, and I you know, I, I hear very clearly as well what you're saying about, you know, even when we are facing a disrupted life, 
when we can recognize the, 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 the privileges we have, the support that we have, it does shift things a bit. I mean, you, you talk about um, you know, women in situations where they've had to quit their job and support their husband or partner, maybe because they're earning more because the cultural expectation is such that they should still be the, the primary caregiver. And um, you know, we were discussing via email offline um, this, this interesting um, report from the UN. It was really targeted towards um, women in developing countries, um, especially yeah. looking to make sure things were happening, were not happening like girls dropping out of school at this time and so forth. But as I was reading through um, this, this article on, on various interventions that could be done to help women um, through the pandemic, I just thought to myself, um, so many of these are, are just relevant even for, for the people in more privileged positions. We all, we all need this, this amount of, um, shall we say, help from outside, you know? I mean, it's, it's one thing to talk about, okay, you have a job, but then if your, your government has set things up where um, the, the daycare is not open, Mm-hmm. For example, and you have a small child, you still have difficult decisions to make. So there, there's this element of understanding that there's, there's still this external support that has to happen. You, you can't do it all yourself. You can't expect to do it all yourself. So, um, you know, I always say, who, who cares for the caregivers <laughs> is, is what yes. I, I think about when I, when I, when I um, consider those things. Um, we have this massive, almost unpaid industry of service. And we need to give it more respect, more respect, more credit. Um, and I think, I think stories like yours help to do that. I mean, when you see the, I don't quite want to say work, but yes, the work that goes into, into grief, into grief in, as a way of understanding a situation and, um, and processing it, not just as an individual, but as a community. You know, these are things that we take so much for granted, but we're kind of learning not to take it for granted so much in this pandemic now. Um, and and yes, I really, I really do want people to understand that although the uh, the issue is affecting women more, it's not just a, a women's issue. We do need to look carefully at how we view caregiving and where we center it in our lives. Um, and when I say center it, are we making space for it? Are we giving support to it? And all those things. Yes. I can't believe that we only have a few more minutes left. I need to ask you about how have things, how have things changed for you? What has life been like since becoming uh, a winner of the Commonwealth Short Story Prize? Yes, <clears throat> you know, um, one of the things that uh, like affected me was the COVID because I, I had a lot of projects uh, going mm. on because of the prize that mm-hmm. were postponed or... Yeah. Uh, or they were cancelled even um, the worst part is that I had like four uh, travels to go uh, to mm-hmm. participate in, uh, in some events uh, mm-hmm. we either did this online or we said we are going to do it um, after the pandemic is over or it, it's going to be in an ease hopefully um, mm-hmm. Uh, what happened is that I am in talks about translated my my books, which is very important. Nice. Yes. Uh, the first translation has been published in Ukrainian. Uh, nice. It was, yes. Um, it, it was it was a very it was very nice. It it, it was a it was a very it was a very good uh, project that we took. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm very happy to see my book uh, translated. And I think what the price. Uh, uh, help it help me uh, it was the fact that I had the chance to to make my work known to other people that they don't speak Greek because when you come for a, a I, I won't say country because I think my the language I write in is is my country in a way mm-hmm. when you are a Greek author it's very difficult uh, to find opportunities and make your voice be listened so I think the the best prize this uh, competition gave me was mm-hmm. to be able to have my voice heard, and I think this nice. is something that you cannot uh, measure. And uh, what else? I, I'm just waiting now to see mm-hmm. what is going to happen, how these mm-hmm. projects will be developed, mm-hmm. and um, hopefully, as we said, um, mm-hmm. this is a break for our ordinary lives and. I know it's going to sound a bit cliche, but 
I, I really appreciate some things now uh, that I have as a writer. Uh, mm -hmm. That It can uh, be cliched and still write. <laughs> it can yes, still yes, be true. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And, and I'm very happy to say that um, I, you know, uh, I have a lot more confidence now after the competition, after the winning. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's always like this, isn't it? You need somebody to tell you that you're doing a good job. Yes. Yes. It's yes. so common among us, isn't it? <laughs> you need somebody to tell you that you're doing a good job, that mm -hmm. good job, that what you wrote is good, uh, that you are worth, um, that you can continue doing that. And, you know, and I think that all that uh, strength that I gathered because of, um, of the Commonwealth uh, Award, um, helped me through this uh, situation and it is very valuable all this experience we we had in the past and mm. this is so uh, what helped us carry on in the future that is fantastic to hear um i do have one selfish question because this is just me wanting this but yes. has anyone looked at your story has anyone looked at death customs and said this would make an amazing play Yes, I well, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, um, yes, I was talking. This is so, this is so funny because this is one of the like uh, a few good news during this uh, time that mm -hmm. uh, a director called me a few days ago and he said that he read the story and uh, he found it amazing. So they want to do a play out of it. So, <sighs> yes, okay. I have. <laughs> I have this project going on and mm -hmm. we're going to meet uh, hopefully soon <laughs> to mm -hmm. how it become how it can become more theatrical the play mm -hmm. how it goes, it's going to be become a play mm -hmm. so yes uh, yes it, it was a very theatrical uh, story anyway so I think mm -hmm. it's very easy for somebody to picture yes yes no, I feel, I feel, uh, I feel very contented hearing that news. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to listen yes. out for how it develops because um, that was, you know, from the moment I read it, I was like, my goodness, I'm just, I'm just seeing this being performed. I'm just hearing this being spoken. And I'm, I'm happy to hear that somebody else has seen that as well. And is going to, going to make that vision come into reality. Yeah. That's excellent. Hopefully hmm. Karen, um, it's going to be a good play and maybe we can meet again. Oh, oh yes. And <laughs> Even meet in person and be able, I will mm -hmm. be glad to see you, you know. Oh man, you. I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to that so much. We're going to hold that image in our heads as a, as a wish list thing, as a, as a thing that has to happen. Put it all in the universe yes. as the expression goes. Definitely. We're going to um, do everything again. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are going to do everything again, Karen. We are going to travel. We are going to write great books. We are going to see <laughs> our books. Uh, becoming theatrical plays yeah it, it's going to happen because you know, life goes on and still goes mm -hmm. on now that we are talking you know it's remarkable that we found ways to continue living and to continue be ourselves because yeah it's, mm -hmm. it's and it's about privileges i always want to remember that i i am in a good position and mm -hmm. there are women that they are in worse position than us. And I think it's it's time for solidarity and mm -hmm. give help support to people across the board. Mm -hmm. Yes, support other people, other women that they suffer more than we do. Absolutely. I'm I'm really I'm really happy that you mentioned that because you know, pandemics and plagues are not new to human civilization. They're not new to our experience. And every time you, you look in the historical record, it's always a question of what did this civilization learn from this traumatic experience? What, what kind of people are we going to become collectively at the end of this? And I'm glad, I mean, as you say, you don't want to sound as if you're, you're being overly optimistic or so on, but you can at least say about certain traumas, maybe this is to make us look more um, carefully at ourselves and how we're doing things and how we can improve and how we can make things better and support and solidarity and 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 as I said being aware of the people who already do so much to make our lives easier you know just the cooking and the cleaning and the things that we don't think about or respect because they're just in the background 
you know, all of all of those things, I really just want us to to change how we view them as as a culture, as a global culture, and and give it the full yeah. respect it deserves. Absolutely. Well, I think we're near the end of our time, and I'm so sorry because I could have chatted for a whole lot longer. Okay. And I and I have to say, this is one of the the perks of being a judge for this competition because I. I would never have, have come across your writing otherwise. And it yes. just opened up. It, it just opened up such a vista for me. It's not, it's not just that you are reading a work in translation. It's that you're reading it and you're feeling the echoes of your own country and your own culture. And there's just something so strangely, deeply familiar about it, even though you know there's no real historical or even cultural connection. And there's something about that that just is a deeper level of communication that I don't know, it just, it just feels, it feels amazing. And, and it's why I understand you when you were talking about going back to your library and reading your books and whatever, it fuels you as a writer. It, it literally fills back up the well of your inspiration to know that these are the works out there, that these are the are the, the emotions that are being spoken of and addressed and, and portrayed um, very much a universal experience. Thank you so much, Constantia. And I wish you all the best. And I hope to hear again from you very soon. Thank you so much, Karen. And again, uh, I want to thank Commonwealth uh, as well. You know, it's, it's like being back to my family when we have all this conversation and talk with you people. So thank you so much again for this opportunity. And I wish mm -hmm. everybody lots of luck. And as I said, we will overcome this and mm -hmm. we will meet again. We will meet again. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you.